Okay, hi. <coughs> ah. Okay. I hope I can be hit. And let's adjust the music a bit. that view here going to read is The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. Uh, oh, hi Miri. A comic series by Don Rosa. Um, I have it set up here. Let me change this to full screen. There we go. And it... Well, it is... I'm doing this for me as an uh, exercise in reading English. And also for you to have something to laugh at. So, let's see how well it goes. The comic itself is a long comic series of 12 chapters plus a bus a few bonus uh, chapters and I I will be leaving out the uh, chapter 0 for now we can do this uh, as a prequel later but we start with the first chapter I hope this comic will uh, be enjoy enjoyable for you as it is for me. It is my favorite of all time. And it's been a while since I've read it, uh, even in English. I haven't read, didn't even read it in English once. So it will be something new for me as well. Uh, also to the comic, uh, the stories are based of uh, the facts from uh, Don Rosa, the creator of the ducks, including Scrooge. And some stories uh, bring some historical facts with them and some hi historical figures uh, also appear. This is what I think uh, makes the most out of it. Uh, it's kind of a believable story, so to speak, even if it is involving ducks. And it starts, as you can see on this uh, first screen, at uh, 1877. Let me just switch really quickly. I need to see this. So, there we go. Looks right. 
Um, if you have any questions or complaints about uh, <laughs> my pronunciation, please uh, hit me up on this. Uh, is it is, as I said, an exercise for me. But we can take our uh, very time. Scrooge McDuck is the world's richest duck. He loves his money. All five multiplillion, multiplillion, nine impossibilion, seven fantastic trillion dollars and sixteen cents of it. He loves it mu so much because he worked so hard to earn it. He loves it so much because he worked just as hard to keep it. He knows exactly where he got each coin he so carefully hoards. Together they'll tell the story of his life. <sighs> Beginning with his number one dime, the first coin, coin he ever earned, which was placed lovingly on a velvet pillow. But how did he earn that dime? How did he get so rich? What is the story of his life? It's none of your goddamn business. Oh, so. Life and Times so of Scrooge McDuck. Part 1. The Last of the Clan McDuck. Dismal dawns, lad. A desolate and piece of real estate, as y'all find anywhere in Scotland. It was here that the mighted Clan McDuck chose to build its ancestral home. But that castle has been abandoned since the 13th century. Now golden eagles nest in its lofty turrets, looking out over your last realm of Okrogra. Oh, that's a bit tricky. Looking out over a lost realm of Okrogra and Brecon. And Petamigan and Groose here in the Heather or Clan Cemetery. Hide here in the Heather or Clan Cemetery. So, as I said, lad, but it's time you learned something of your ancestors. After all, this is even all your tenth birthday. Are you listening, Scrooge? Aye, Papa. <laughs> that Scottish is uh, difficult to read. <laughs> why, why have you never brought me here before, Papa? It's a long trip from Glasgow, just to be reminded of our former glory. And glorious our ancestors were. The only clan thought enough to tame dismal, dismal dawns. This vast moor is still our land, but no MacDuck has dared live here since the days of the Hound. Aye, lad, the Hound, a monstrous devil dog that drove our ancestors from their home in 1675. So long ago, and now can we afford to move back? Nay. After moving to Glasgow, we MacDucks started over in the shipping trade. And Captain Seafoam MacDuck made a new fortune sailing his golden goose on the trade route to the West Indies. But in 1753, one Swindle MacSue tricked Seafoam with a contract to deliver some horseradish to Jamaica then scuttled the goose. When the ship sank, Seafoam forfeited that fortune that Maxu forfeited that fortune to Maxu 
and escaped with only an heirloom watch in his pocket and golden teeth in his mouth. <laughs> what about the legend of MacDuck treasure? Aye, that would uh, restore us, but I fear it's lost forever. Sir Quackley MacDuck was given a chest of gold in return for defending King Macbeth during the Civil War of 1057. But Quackley got carried away with protecting it and accidentally sealed himself into a wall with his treasure. Whoops. For centuries the clan searched high and low for Sir Quackley's gold, but they never even found Sir Quackley. Lads. Nay, my boy, we are a poor clan now. My father was a lonely miner, and my factory pay barely supports your mother and your two sisters, and... Hey, you! Tis the whisker wheels. They have grazed their sheep on our land since we make dark have chased out. Can you read your old coat? I'm Fergus MacDuck, and I'm kinda trespass on me own land. Ah, a MacDuck? You're better clear of, uh, cloth for the hound, before the hound gets your scent. I'm not afraid of your silly legend. I have a good mind to poke your eye here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's be on our way, Scroogey. I think I hear your mama calling. All the way from Glasgow? Ooh. Haha, <laughs> this hound costume works just as well as it did 200 years ago. And why not? The McDucks will never forget, recover from that humiliation. That night, back in Glasgow. MacDuck's dinner takes such from those lowlanders whisker will. Let's go buck their floppy ears. Let's go box their floppy ears. Uncle Jake's right, Papa. Now, Scroogey, with your Uncle Pothole moved to America, that leaves only your Papa and Uncle Jake. Not much of a fighting clan, MacDuck. <laughs> That's the little one, that's always just blabbling. <laughs> we don't leave Scroogey much uh, proud of, nor we Hortensia or Matilda either. Our chances have all passed by, Jake. What you are making, Papa? A shoeshine kit for Scroogey's birthday. Maybe it will teach the lad to make something of himself. Maybe he will make the name MacDuck respectable, respectable again. He is our clan's last hope. Aye, and with that reg equipment like that, he will someday become a millionaire. No need to become sarcastic, Jake. But truth be known, Fergus' idea to inspire Scrooge wasn't worth a dime. It was worth the dime. The next morning. Made any money with your new shoeshine kit, Scrooge Alat? Not yet, Papa. I'm trying, but I'm afraid I'm just no, no business man type. Well, keep at it, lad. I have a feeling that a body with some powerful dirty boots will be along any minute. Papa, why don't you tell Scrooge that? The ditch digger will be with that will be by with that strange coin he found. Shh, quite Mathilda. If Scrooge knows I sent Bird to be his first customer, it will spoil spoil me plan. I want him to earn his first pay on a tough job, so he learn a lesson about hard work. And when Bird pays him. 
with that useless American die, you'll be learning to be not so trusting. Oh, sorry, skip that. His first coin will inspire him to greatness. It might inspire him to be in birth with that dime. You know how Scroogey is. Shush, lassie. There comes Bird now. Shine, mister. I. I'll bet this dried muck is from the Morris and Murrit, where the whole Norman army once bugged down and had to cross some barefoot. One half hour later. <sighs> I'm finished. Five plants, please. But when the exhaust bo exhausted boy comes to. My pay, my first coin I've ever earned from my own labor. Wait, this is an American coin. A dime. That's a sh. That sh. Scarby tricked me. This should be a lesson. Life is filled with tough jobs. There will always be sharpies to cheat me. We'll, well, I'll be tougher than the toughies, and sharper than the sharpies, and I'll make my money square. I have a feeling this is the starting of something big. Shine, mister. From that day on, young Scrooge worked with the fervor and perseverance not seen in a MacDuck since the glory days of the clan. He always gave some of his earnings to his proud father to help pay the expenses, though he was always insisted on a receipt for tax purposes. Hootsman may have over-inspired the lad. In a few years, Scrooge has saved enough to buy a horse and cart. He started gathering firewood to sell to the wealthy city dwellers but soon discovered uh, that selling peat blocks to the rich was even more profitable. Peat. The elite use peat for heat. Impress your friends. Grossly overpriced. Young Scrooge often travelled as far as Rannock Moor to cut peat. Were the peat blocks richer there? Or were there another reasons for his journey? Papa wanted me to stay away from here, but I cannot resist seeing Castle MacDuck again. As long as I'm here, I might as well tidy up the clan cemetery before I start on. I wonder if it, if I ever ever be able to afford to fix the castle, if I will ever be able to restore it to its former glory. There's no grass to mow, but I might have to comb the slime and dust off the rocks a bit. Who's that? Whiskerwills. I tell you, it's a good bet MacDuck's treasure is buried here. You lads dig up over there while I pry up the slab. They, they're desecrating the clan cemetery, looking for the quackly skull. What will I do? What can one duck MacDuck do against all those whiskerwills? I'd I better just leave. Look, Highlander Get that scamp. He's stealing the pee from the marsh. They cut me off. I should listen to Papa and kept clear of dismal dawns. Psst lad. This way fast. He ducked into the castle. Forget him. I'm not going after that ghastly, into that ghastly place. You'll be safe here, laddie. Those black guards there ne'er come near. Thanks. If they had caught me, they would have had trashed me proper. Especially since you are a MacDuck. Oh, I can tell by looking at you. Still, I've never been inside th this castle. Then this time 
you had a great tour, then it's time you had a great to grand tour into the main hall with you. Great honk! It must be. It, it must look just as it did in the days of my ancestors left. Aye, nobody comes near this place, especially not those craven Whiskervilles. Did MacDucks wear those huge suits of armor? And not the entire suits, lad. And enemies' helmets were uh, no no design for low angle viewing. That's why the MacDucks were such fearsome warriors. <laughs> They're low profile. The MacDuck on that tapestry didn't do so well. That is Sir Ida MacDuck, who was felled during a Saxon siege in 946. His serfs desert deserted because he only paid 30 copper pieces per hour for the lot of them. And this is Sir Swampsole MacDuck, who sealed the castle dungeons in 1220 when it became too expensive to operate a proper dungeon. This was once a noble house lad. MacDuck sailed forth in fear or no man, born or woman, except maybe the tax collector. Did you live here, mister? Well, I wouldn't say that, but I do watch over the place and Barsha Whisker will head now and then. Why? Are you a MacDuck? How could I be a MacDuck? You know that your papa and your uncles are the last MacDuck men besides you. And what are you, lad? Will you restore the clan to glory? Aye, I have already begun my fortune. See, here's my number one dime. Good lad. You will be... Uh, give me a second. Good lad. But you will not gain much glory hauling peat and shiny shoes. There's still a wee drama or inspiration missing from your haggis. That coin lad. It's not Scottish. Is that the omen you're missing? It is an American coin. I could go to America, the land of opportunity to seek my fortune, but what would I do there? I wouldn't know, lad, but maybe your uncle Pothole needed a mate on his riverboat? Yes, I'll do it. America, here I come. But first, there are some thieving Whiskervilles that needs a sound thrashing from a MacDuck. What have you in mind, lad? I need to borrow a suit of armor, some horses, and some horse armor as well. Borrow away, lad. It's your property. After all, you are the last of the clan, MacDuck. Last but not least, not from now on. Give me a second. Yeah. Oh. Give me a hand with this slaps, mate. It's starting to give. Who dares to desecrate MacDuck graves in search of my gold? What is that? I'm invincible. I'm doom itself. God, the claws of Sir Quackley. Hi. Run for heels. <laughs> they run so fast they were too quick for the quicksand. On my way to America, mister. I will be back some day. That's the spirit Mac that's the MacDuck spirit lad. Good luck. That's a nice use of uh, color here. What do you think? I think there's a new hope. 
the name MacDuck will shine again. Will Scrooge do as proud? He will and do worse than you, pig. You ate yourself to death in the king's tree. Why then ya yeah, you show him where your treasure was hidden? Nay, if a Scrooge is to achieve greatness, he must work for it. Only then will we regain our honor. But really, I don't think I look as threatening as all that grave hath nonsense. You are no bony prince, Charlie. Oh, shut up. As you might have noticed, this was Sir Quackley's real ghost. Leaving the moor that night was a duck who hoped that some day he have the wealth to return to Dismal Downs as the new lord of Castle MacDuck, and the horse who hoped that when the duck did return, he didn't bring, he would bring a different horse. <laughs> From now on, Scrooge based his shoe shine trade at Glasgow sh stockyards, where shoe sh shines were always in demand. Um, but opportunity is soon unknocked and he pounced on a job offering work as a cabin boy on a cattle ship headed for New Orleans. And so I wish you weren't leaving without your shillings, Scrooge. I have my first time, Papa. It will see me through. You might need more. Here are the only valuables the clan owns. Great grandfather's gold thief and his, and his silver pocket watch. I will never sell the watch, but these choppers are sorta of creepy. Goodbye, Scroogey. Scroogey. My stars! I understood her! Take care, Scroogey dear. Please, Mama, not in front of the cattle. Bye, bye, goodbye. When next you see me, Papa, I'll be a rich man. I wonder, will it be success, or will there be nothing waiting for me in America? To be continued. And with that, we can skip this. And we have a nice cut here. I will issue a small break. And we might uh, do the second chapter right after it. That sounds nice. I'll also uh, quickly restart this stream to have uh, it cut off.